Good evening. I have seven o'clock. I'll call the meeting to order and ask the clerk to please call the roll. Thank you, Mayor. Mr. Greg David. Present. Mr. Tyler Dean. Here. Ms. Emily Hamburg. Here. Mr. Justin Smith. Here. Mr. John Welch. Present. And you have a quorum, Mayor. Thank you. This evening we have Father Terry Hedrick from Church of the Resurrection on 37th Street to lead in prayer. Father Hedrick. Let's pray. Holy Father, we come together tonight again in the name of your Son, Jesus, giving you thanks for your presence here now with us by your Holy Spirit. As we gather, we give you thanks that you are a good and gracious God, abounding in mercy and steadfast love. We want to remember to pray that all those in authority in the city of Bel Air would be blessed by you, would have your anointing and be led and guided to seek the best for the city. We pray specifically this night for the city council, for Mayor Jim Benaj, and for all the leaders of our community, especially for the first responders, law enforcement, EMS, and firefighters. We pray that you will reveal the knowledge of your will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding to them as they serve you. May they be fruitful in their service for you. Anoint them with the spirit of wisdom and charity and justice that with steadfast purpose and for the common good, they may faithfully serve in their offices to promote the well-being of all people in the Bel Air community. So finally, we remember the gospel that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. Now we ask all these things, Heavenly Father, in the name of your Son, our Savior Jesus, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, our advocate and guide, the one who is present with us even now. So we give you thanks, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Please join me in a pledge of allegiance to the American flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next item on the agenda is agenda additions. Do we have any additions to make to the agenda? Mr. Mayor. Mr. David. It's not an addition, but I'm wondering if we should move 11D to after the executive session. I have the same question. If that's the desire of the council, it's certainly welcome to do that, I think. Yeah. Okay, so we want to put that after the first executive session? Yes. Okay. Is it 11 or 12? 11, okay. Mr. Mayor, can we get a motion? And then a second. Okay. Please. Would you make a motion, please? Uh, make a motion to move 11D to after executive session. Second um, that. Motion by Mr. David, a second by Mr. Welch. Uh, all in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed, same sign. That motion carries five to zero. All right, so the next item on the agenda is uh, the consent or appropriation ordinance. ordinance. I'm no. sorry, it is consent agenda. I got, got a little mixed up because I was looking for the other D. <laughs> okay, so the consent agenda contains only the minutes of March 5, 2024, regular city council meeting. And are there any additions or corrections or motion to approve the consent agenda? I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda as listed and authorize the mayor to sign. Second. I have a motion by Mr. Welch, a second by Ms. Hamburg. Any discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for a vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. That motion carries five to zero. And on item seven, uh, discussion approval of appropriations ordinance. So this, this ordinance encompasses the 2024, the to February 24, 2024 through March 11, 2024 expenses and one payroll cycle. Expenditures amount to $471,383.25. 
of the reported expenses, 63,469 are infrastructure costs for new developments. And these costs are paid through special assessments. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Uh, Davis Smith. I'll make a motion to approve the appropriations ordinance number 24-05. Second. A motion by Mr. Smith, a second by Mr. David. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. That motion carries five to zero. Move on to city requested appearances. So this evening, we kind of have a special thing, and I uh, want to read something here. If I can get it on my screen. Okay, there we go. So as we all know, Ty Lasher is retiring after 36 years of public service. So he came to Bel Air in, 20, in 2007, the same year my wife and I moved to Bel Air. Harold Smith was the mayor at that time, and Ty actually served for three mayors, Harold Smith, David Austin, and myself. Uh, when one looks at financial condition of the city back then, one may wonder why anyone would stick around. Uh, there have been some, good, some tough times, and there have been some good times, but Ty obviously saw a vision of what could be. So since 2007, Bel Air has grown from a community of about 6,000 people to about 8,500 people today. Uh, that's more than 40% growth. Uh, residential developments continue to boom in Bel Air. Today, there are some 19 residential developments that represent 1,570 new living units. And that equates to about 6,200 new residents. So when all of those houses or units are filled, the city will have a population of over 14,000 people. And that is the legacy of Ty Lasher. In 2012, Ty was instrumental in starting the Sunflower Commerce Park. In 2013, it saw its first occupant, Century Manufacturing. Then came FedEx, Hoops, Buzzy Unison, Empire Wall, Epic Sports, Nordic Stone, SCED, Clinic in the Can, and others. Uh, today, Summer, Sunflower Commerce Park is really booming with a series of warehouses, Waltons, as we'll talk about later tonight, and other businesses coming to town. The icing and cake was landing Integra. While this is still open until Integra learns if they get CHIPS funding, Integra coming to Bel Air will be a game changer. A 1 million square foot facility with 2,500 jobs will push Bel Air into the first class city status for size. There are many be things Bel Air will need to do once we have confirmation this is coming. We are ready. Ty helped us to make certain we are ready. Once the CHIP funding is approved, we will execute our plans. That's the spirit of true leadership. Integra will also be the legacy of Ty Lasher. When I was first elected mayor, the city had a huge burden around its neck and debt obligations related to real estate the city had been holding for many years. Given direction to start moving this real estate, the Ty was instrumental in selling all but a couple of acres of what once, once was some 2,000 acres in real estate holdings. This made a huge difference in Bella's financial position, which provided us with the ability to be to make a significant road improvements. Some have been worked, many more are in the works. Ty was instrumental in, with vision to get K254 Development Association started. This is a coalition, this is a coalition of all communities from Park City to El Dorado. We had a great announcement on May 7th. Uh, the interchanges at Rock Road and Webb Road are moving into the development phase. This is a great win for Bel Air and the people of the region who use K254. This too is part of Ty's legacy in Bel Air. Ty is well respected in Bel Air staff and civic leaders in the metro area and around the state. In November 2020, Ty Lasher was presented with the Buford Watson Jr. Award by Kathy Sexton of the Kansas Association of County of City County Management. This is the state's highest honor in the city and county management profession. Uh, this was a great tribute to Ty's outstanding leadership. So under Ty's leadership, Bel Air continues to be one of the fastest, safest cities in this, Kansas. In 2023, we were ranked fourth, but have consistently stayed in the top 10 for many years. That's a tribute to great leadership, growing the city and maintaining safety is as a difficult balance. Ty has achieved that balance during his tenure. So just to recap, Ty's legacy includes over 40% growth, Sunflower Commerce Park, landing Integra, selling Bel Air held real estate, making a huge difference in our financial position, K254 Development Association, moving Rock and Web, 
interchange improvements to development phase, being awarded the Buford Watson Jr. Award for Outstanding City Management and maintaining the status of one of the safest cities in the state of Kansas. Bel Air has truly been blessed with Ty's leadership. Ty, you are leaving some really big shoes to fill. We thank you for your many years of service with outstanding accomplishments. We hope you and Denise enjoy this new chapter in your life in retirement. And I have some things to present to you. <laughs> First of all, we got a plaque. It says if the years years of exceptional service, uh, seventeen of which were devoted in shaping Bel Air, Kansas. Your visionary leadership has left a lasting impact on the community. Your legacy celebrates both individual achievement and collaborative success and will continue to live through the communities you've shaped. As you begin a new chapter, may your future be as bright as your dedicated career to excellence. You're certainly welcome. We also have here a, a custom art piece created by Annie Pawn at Karg Art. She used visions of Bel Air to inspire a piece that honors the legacy of Ty has left its Bel Air community. This was, this was the heavy one. So there it is. Um. So. Looks like it might be a candle holder, but I don't know. So. <laughs> okay, so that's cool. Yeah, it is. So. Mayor, certainly so for all the years. I appreciate that, and and if you and the council allow me, I've got a special and final uh, manager's report I'd like to give. Okay. During that portion, okay. if you'll allow me. Okay. Next on the agenda is citizen concerns. So if you wish to speak, well, we have these uh, few cards here. So I'll call the citizens up in, in the order of cards received. Um, the rules, I think the folks that have signed up know them, but just to reiterate, uh, we give you three minutes to speak. Uh, and um, we, meet, we would request that you give your name and address for the record so that it's on the record. And the first is Mr. Dave Landolph. And please speak in the microphones because it's on thank TV you mr recording. mayor you, i'm probably the only one you can hear here tonight uh thank you mr mayor and council members dave landle 4743 north kruger here in bel-air politically we are in the strangest position in my lifetime the government officials from dc to the city seem to have forgotten who works for who the government is supposed to be of by and for the people government officials elected are elected by the majority vote the majority, not the minority. Most of the current city governing body was not here when the Woodlawn Project was voted in, and I'm sure they're relieved and blameless for that. I believe another ruling came down, which maybe none of you were here, but I also guess most of you did not realize it's even in place. I didn't, and I was surprised when I heard about it. We now have a spring festival during which we have an egg hunt, not an Easter egg hunt, just an egg hunt. And because we can't call it an Easter egg hunt. That might offend someone. And supposedly this came down from the federal government. You know, the one that was elected by us in Washington, D.C. that works for us. I also heard we have a holiday or winter party, not a Christmas party, which may offend someone. And I consider myself, and I assume all of you are members of the majority as well, and I'm personally offended. It's, as for me, I think it's time to end this nonsense. As for the governing body, now that you are aware, I would expect you to put an end to this nonsense 
in our city at least, political correctness has outlived its usefulness. I know you can't tell the county, state, or federal government what to do, but who knows? Every journey starts with a first step. If you are willing, unwilling to take that first step, then it's time for you to step down. Pardon me while I may offend someone, but happy Easter. Thank you. Next, uh, we have Rosemary Wood. Good evening. Um, my name is Rosemary Wood, and I live at 4700 North Hillcrest in Bel Air. I am here to talk about my back uh, yard neighbor. It's looking more and more like a junkyard and a parking lot, and it's increasingly getting worse. So the two items of concern that I wrote on the online form submittal code enfor enforcement complaint, I'd like to read that to you now. Two items. Large RV more than 72 hours has been parked visible from 45th and Woodlawn and our backyard. It appears to be hooked up to the city sewage and an electrical disconnect box. Both pop-outs are out and appears to be lived in. The RV has been on the property since June of 2023, approximately. Second issue is that on the southwest corner of the property and on our fence line, there's an accumulation of leaves in a wooden box, wood pile, and equipment next to the electrical pole, thus encroaching on their side of their property of an eight-foot easement, which would push the easement towards our lawn if there should be use. So in addition to all that, we have cars parked on the lawn, on the backyard, on the side of the yard, and a fake panel to cover the driveway more than five cars most days. I have printed out the two regulations on our website in Bel Air, and it says parking of a Regulation, RV, sorry, <laughs> not enough water to drink, sorry. RV boats trailers is limited to a 72 hour period when parked in the driveway and limited to 24 hours when parked on the street. RVs, boats, jet skis, ATVs, trailers, etc., may be parked upon the owner's own residential premises for no more than 72 hours, unless when screened in conformance with landscaping and fencing code, so as to not be visible from any adjoining property and when stored upon an all-weather surface that is accessible from all-weather surface drive. Now about the operating vehicles. It's in your dialect inoperable vehicle is a vehicle that does not display, et cetera, et cetera. But in that same section, it says operable vehicles shall be parked on paved driveway, driveways or parking areas related to the garage or car park and on the streets except when specifically prohibited. So I have cars parked literally right on my fence line in the middle of the yard on the side of the yard. Sorry. Okay. That's, that's, that's three, three minutes? minutes? That's the three minutes, yeah. Okay. Well, that's perfect because I have a partner that will be next, I'm sure. <laughs> Thank Very you. Good. Thank you. And, and congratulations, Mr. That, uh, Lasher. Thank you. So next is Mr. Kellywood. <clears throat> okay. Uh, my name's Kelly Wood. I'm... Uh, 4700 uh, Hill, Hillcrest, and uh, that's my boss over there. All right, uh, just kind of sum up, summarize for my wife. Um, and again, I've been here, beautiful Bel Air for two years. Love it here. It's a beautiful, beautiful city. Um, I bought a home 30 years ago. It was beautiful, mature, well-groomed yards, well cared for, beautiful neighborhoods, very mature. <coughs> Uh, as time passed, many of the owners began to pass away. Well, homes became rentals, lawns became unmowed, RVs and junk cars appeared everywhere. <clears throat> Multiple families began living in single homes. Upon selling my pristine groomed and remodeled home, I lost about $100,000. <clears> 
Codes are what protect all of our home values, among other things. Does this sound right to you? Let's pretend I'm your neighbor. I'm going <clears> to <throat> dump a bunch of gravel out on a makeshift pad. <clears throat> I'm going to pull in a large RV. I'm going to run a 50 amp cable underground. I'm going to cut the sewer, four inch sewer clean out line, which belongs to the city. I'm going to put a tap in there. Okay. And then I'm going to surround the whole front yard with a metal fence. I don't think Bel Air wants corrugated rusty metal fences because if you approve one metal fence, anything goes. I drove around on uh, Sawmill Creek, Elk Creek, Indian Street. I didn't see anything like that. Codes are there for a good reason and I don't want to lose any equity. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate your comments and concerns. We, we, as we have talked before, we, we have our folks working on it. It's a slow process. I am sorry it's a slow process, but it hasn't been forgotten. So, okay, thank you for your, for your concern. Um, next, we move on to council member reports, unless there are other citizens that would like to speak. I don't see any, but um, if there are, you speak up. Okay. So move on to council member reports. Uh, Mr. Dean, do you have a report? Mr. Mayor, thank you. I do have a short report. <clears throat> Attended the latest K254 Corridor Association meeting last uh, Friday. We actually honored Ty as being instrumental to starting the, the organization. So it was good to see everybody um, you know, in attendance for him. Um, we also had a little bit of strategic planning. We had what I'll call a mini workshop. Um, I'm actually uh, a part of the strategic planning committee to kind of help our, our organization, our association move forward. So that was very helpful and we're, we'll continue working on the strategic plan for that. We also heard from KDOT um, on the local meetings, the local consult, and then also just, you know, a good kudos to them for, for the announcement. There was a lot of things to go around. There was a couple of legislators in the room too that made sure to pass on that. Thanks. So appreciate KDOT. Um, with those improvements that are moving to the development pipeline. <clears throat> and then just kind of to remind people what that means. So the development pipeline is sort of the initial major step that helps kick off design. Um, and so the next step that'll happen as it finishes it through the design process, it will, the next step would be the construction pipeline. So we're a little ways, ways away, but um, making good progress. So it's great to see that. Um, and is a huge, huge win for not just Bel Air, but the, uh, the whole uh, metro area, the corridor that's been working hard to advocate. So appreciate everybody's uh, work on that. I also wanted to remind everybody uh, of Spring Fest, uh, Spring Festival that is coming up um, this Saturday at the Rec. There will also be a, a warm up walk. The Bel Air Walk Bike Group is hosting that at 1245 it's just going to be a lap around around the rec complex so feel free to join us and then i know ty will probably touch on this too but maybe he won't now since i have Cedric county emergency management just as a reminder is hosting a severe weather awareness training uh, this thursday i have 6 30 here at city hall is that right i think that's correct um, i assume it'll be in the community room but that's all i have thank you okay thank you mr david mr mayor no report thank you Mr. Smith. No report. Mr. Welch. No report. Ms. Hamburg. I have a fast report. Um, I attended the Lions meeting last Wednesday, and um, uh, Police Chief Atterbury gave a report, um, just an overview of the police department, um, kind of uh, uh, theories about um, how they handle giving a warning versus a ticket, how, how your police trafficking uh, kind of helps keep tabs on uh, that, that, that inverse relationship where if you have good traffic management, it's not just about um, traffic violations, but people know your police are alert and it may deter people from coming through here that may not want to have the police stop them um, and, and his thoughts on uh, some legislation uh, in Topeka. So it was a, it was a good um, overview. And um, one thing that's in the pipeline he mentioned is um, the, uh, the city starting a uh, uh, a citizens police academy where there might be some opportunities for um, citizens to kind of get to know the department a little bit better on a deeper level. So um, keep your eyes open for that. Thank you, Mayor. 
It's cool. They're going to do the police academy. I hadn't heard about that. That's great. Thank you. All right. So we'll move on to mayor's report. So I understand that Council President Smith had a birthday last week. So happy belated birthday to Council Member Smith. Uh, Council President says. Uh, on March 9th, I attended the Cedric County Association of Cities in Cedric County, Kansas. So uh, we heard from Cedric County Emergency uh, Communications, also known as 911. They are looking to form a committee advisory board. Members of this board cannot be elected officials and they plan to meet once per quarter. To apply for this opportunity, go to sedgwickcounty.org website. In the top left-hand corner, you apply for button, find the apply for button, and scroll to advisory boards and scroll down to the list of emergency community advisory board. Also heard from the Sedgwick County Public Works Director concerning public right-of-way issues, and uh, he is looking to clean, clear up city the county right away issues, but he's they did say they will assist in working with city to city issues as well. So that was good to, to hear and good to see what he's up to there. Uh, on March 13th, I attended the utility advisory committee meeting. Uh, they, they're uh, finalizing plans for a booth they're going to sh share with the city of Bel Air at the Spring Festival this coming Saturday. Uh, they will be promoting the lead and copper initiative as well as backflow preventer recertifications, which is which are required to be done by June 1st of this year. On March 15th, I, as, along with uh, Mr. Tyler Dean, attended the K254 Development Association meeting. Ty was recognized, as, as Mr. Dean uh, said. We also heard from KTA, Kansas Turnpike Authority, about their cashless tolling. tolling. Uh, most have probably heard a bit of this by now, but it will be implemented in July of this year. And if you don't have a K tag, you might want to get one. K tag is going to be the least costly way to drive the turnpike. So uh, we heard from our very own Tyler Dean and Kichai Mayor Ashley Valakez about the uh, Strategic Planning Committee update, and they are just getting started, so primarily reviewing the purpose of the organization from its bylaws. And lastly, probably the least, I was elected the Vice President of the organization. So on uh, Sunday, March 17th, I participated in St. Pat Patrick's Day Parade sponsored by St. Patrick's Church. And this was fun. I walked uh, with the knights, and fortunately, fortunately, we were in front of the horses, uh, right in front of them. Uh, uh, and I know Ty Lasher attempted to have a parade in Bel Air in 2020 for our 40th anniversary, but was prohibited from doing so due to county COVID restrictions. So I'm hopeful we can resurrect that idea in Bel Air and per, of a parade of a, a Bel Air parade in in the near future. So remember, Spring Festival is coming Saturday from 1 to 3 at the Bel Air Rec Center. So I'll now ask our attorney for her report. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would like to give a brief update on our sewer use ordinance. Last week, we had training session number two. This time, we are focusing on inspection practices. And I'd like to say thank you to Burns McDonald, our city engineer, our public works department, because they're the ones that are really organizing this and they're allowing me to sit in. And regarding the inspection practices, the ultimate purpose, of course, is compliance, compliance with our ordinance compliance with permit conditions, compliance with state and local requirements. But more specifically, we're even talking about our roles and our appropriate responsibilities in regarding to the sewer use ordinance itself. There was some really good information shared about preparation for the inspection. So pre-inspection preparation, talking about how to handle the inspection itself. It was very helpful because Burns McDonald even helped put together a checklist for our staff to make sure that everyone's consistent, whether you have a veteran employee or someone brand new or an assistant. And then an inspection report. I know that council had much concern about making sure that we were diligent in uh, a report as to what had occurred, how did it come about. So there was a specific emphasis put upon the inspection report, making sure that it is done every time, that is done as soon as possible after the inspection to make sure that it's done in a standard format. But overall, uh, what's happening then is we are all becoming more familiar with the ordinance and we're talking it through, making sure that we're as effective as possible, but efficient too. So I'm looking forward, we're gonna have another session, but I'll keep you updated how that goes. 
Very good. I'm glad to see the city uh, staff is working and getting that training done. That's a, a very positive way to get the uh, get us effective in our pre-treatment plans. So thank you. Move on to the city manager report, and he's got a slideshow for us. I didn't have a slideshow, but thank you, Mayor. <laughs> I appreciate everything that you said, Mayor, and and you know, um, closing out 36 years of doing this is is kind of bittersweet. And we were talking earlier. I don't know what I'm going to be doing on Tuesdays now since I have those off. Um, but I wanted to look back, and and you you touched on some of the things I wanted to touch on, but. Um, that's what I looked like in 07 when I got here. Um, I had uh, a few less pounds, uh, a few gray hair, um, but I still got a full head of hair. So that's, I got that going for me. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, changed a little bit over the years. In fact, that was my 40th birthday out when I was in Cheney. And uh, when I started my career as a noxious weed director in 1988, that's what I looked like. And, and that was in Jefferson County, Kansas. Um, so changed and aged a little bit. But, you know, the questions I have now is, was I successful? You know, did I make a difference? What was my legacy? We talk about that. Um, and so, you know, what is success? It's the impact we had on others, the memories we created, personal development we experienced. Did we embrace change? Were we compassionate and were we st strategic? And what we did. So as far as my family, Denise and I have been married 34 years and we're still happily married. So I think I was successful in my relationship there. Um, and that's part of what I'm going to do in my retirement is spend more time with her and do some traveling and just enjoy each other. Um, my son, Alex, um, you can see these pictures. This is what he looked like when he got here. That was at the rec center, one of Brian's fishing tournaments. Um, so they were young when they got here, um, but he graduated from Washington with a business degree. He got an MBA from Wichita State. He works at Vintage Bank as a controller. And we just found out last month we're going to be grandparents in September. First grandkids uh, uh, for us. So um, and, and, you know, again, community. Uh, he went to Boise State and the Bel Air Chamber um, uh, paid his way. Um, and this picture here, he went to prom with Greg David's daughter. So that's a small community that we live in and, and, you know, how we get involved in that. And this is my daughter, Jenna. She also graduated from Washburn. She's a registered respiratory therapist here in town. But here she was uh, at the rec center. Here was a, a Christmas event that City Hall had. They grew up here. Um, she worked at the Heskett as a lifeguard. Um, and she's got a boyfriend she's been dating for over a year now. So my kids grew up here. Um, they're part of this community as well. So what did I do for personal growth? Um, one thing that I'm proud of and my family did give a lot is um, I went back and got my MPA at WSU in 2001 and I was um, working full time and I had a wife and two kids. And back then, couldn't do it online. So I was living in Hutch, working for Reno County. I'd get off at five, I'd drive to Wichita two nights a week, be in class till 9 p.m., drive back home, be back home at 10, get up, go to work the next day and do study on weekends and stuff. So I think that's, I'm pretty proud that I was able to do that. And my family gave up for me to get that master's, but it opened up the new world of, of city management. I was KMET pre president, I was chamber president, mayor, you'd mentioned the Buford Watson. I've been an ICMA credentialed manager and I, at the last uh, ICMA um, uh, conference, I was awarded 35 years of service. And these are some of the things that I've been involved in. I'm not gonna go over all those, but uh, been involved in a lot of events. This is something that's fun that, you know, being in public service that I would have never got to do. Um, you know, I met with the mayor, the, uh, the uh, governor, the mayor and I did representatives, uh, the staff that we have here. Anytime they get new equipment, they invite me out and I'd get to play with a backhoe or uh, drive the new police car or whatever. Um, and this was something that was really fun. Uh, was I was an honorary commander at the um, at McConnell and was able to fly in a tanker and refuel 
and actually climb down and watch them refuel a F-16 over um, Oklahoma. So would have never got to do that if I hadn't had this job. So those are fun things, fun memories that were created that I got to do that I wouldn't have gotten to do had I not had this job. So, you know, impact on others. I hired Ted in 2016. He was the, uh, he was one of 20 um, uh, CFO winners in 2018 with the Wichita Business Journal. He's now the city manager of Bel Air. I hired the uh, chief Atterbury. He, longtime resident, was on the planning commission when I got here. And he decided he was going to retire. And I said, you got to come to work for Bel Air. And he did. And he's been a great addition. And of course, Tristan, um, she started in 2011, 13 years. She was here before I was here. Um, she's been the rising star K KACM. And it's with mixed emotions that I say she's leaving. She accepted the assistant city manager job in Mays, Kansas. That's where she lives. You know, it's sad to see her go, but she's seeing, you know, that was one of her um, goals was to move up in public service. And she has the opportunity now to go be an assistant city manager. So there's, there's some pride in that. Uh, Ann, I hired her from Swab Eaton. Uh, Swab Eaton was our city engineers back when I got here. And in 2015, we said we needed a full-time engineer. So I was able to bring her over from Swab Eaton. Um, was able to promote Marty last year. Keith and Brian, they were here when I got here. And, you know, they taught me about Bel Air and, and how to run, uh, how rec programs work and things like that. Um, and they're still here. This is some past staff. Um, Michelle Meyer was our finance director um, from 20, 2010, 2016. She's now the finance director for Linwood, Washington, which is a suburb of Seattle. Um, Jamie Buster was our city clerk from 09 to 2016. She's now the Wichita city clerk. Um, Matt Stiles was our finance director uh, back in 08. He's at Ellsbur or Hillsborough city um, administrator. And then Cody was an intern for us. He's a city manager. So to have an impact on uh, other uh, employees' lives and to see them go on and succeed is, is good. Um, you know, I was able to help higher and council took my opinion um, and, and my input to get three great um, city attorneys. Um, you know, Allison was here uh, from to, through 2017 and she's now the Lakewood, Colorado city attorney, um, which is a suburb of Denver. Of course, Jackie's now in uh, Derby and we've got Maria who's um, the next rising star for Bel Air. So, you know, did I embrace change? What about memories? I've got some great memories of our staff here. We've had a great uh, small staff. Uh, we've had a lot of fun. They work together well. And um, all the departments came together and, and created a great team. So what about change? Did I embrace change? That was the, the mayor mentioned. That was the council that hired me. Uh, Mayor Smith and Kellen Marlier have both passed away now. Um, Dave Sly now works in, um, uh, he still works at Boeing, but when the Boeing changes took place, he had to move or was transferred to Oklahoma City. And uh, Peggy O'Donnell's still here, still teaching at Sunrise. Dr. Reynolds and Dr. Burr are both retired now, but they still live in town. I worked for three different mayors. All great men enjoyed the relationship I had with, you, with each one of them. And 19 council members. That, that might be a little reason why I have some gray hair. 19 different people <laughs> that I've worked with over that period of time. Um, but I can say that, you know, I had a good relationship with all of them. There wasn't any that I had uh, any real negativity with. So str thinking strategically, Mayor, this is what... Bel Air owned when I got here. All of that in blue was all owned by Bel Air. And with that came a $20 million price tag. And that was in 2007. Think about what 20 million was worth back then. So Mayor Smith and I spent a couple years trying to figure out how do we handle this? What do we do? You know, raise taxes, growing the city, having more taxpayers, we cut expenses, selling land. 
Well, we actually had to do all of it. Um, and so in 09, uh, the council at that time raised the mill from 23 to 37. Um, and then we had cut expenses by 30% and had to lay off staff. Um, but as the mayor said in the last 15 years, we've grown over 30%. Um, but those were tough decisions and tough times. And today we have 20 acres left, everything's gone. Um, this is looking out this window back in 2012, there was hardly any houses out there. Now, if you look out there, it's full. All the lots are sold and there's houses all developed there. That was uh, overlooking, um, looking to the west. So here's Rockwood, here's City Hall right here. There was really no develop, few houses in Central Park. That was it, there was no development back in 2012. Um, and if you drive down 53rd Street now, you can see all the houses that are along there. Um, was able to instrumental in working with two industrial parks. We created the first one, which is Bel Air Industrial Park. This is 45th and Webb. Uh, that's where Wickham Glass is. And um, uh, had that for a couple of years. And then the Michaelis has bought the whole thing out. And uh, so then the, the uh, this was all Sunflower Commerce Park was all was all um, zoned as industrial at that point. And so Mayor Smith said, we've got to, no one's going to buy this 800 acres. We've got to start the development ourselves. So that's when phase one went in, actually put in some uh, roads and such. Here's the groundbreaking of that. Um, Century Manufacturing, as you said, Mayor, was the first business there. Since then, these are all the different companies that we've been able to attract. Uh, one thing that we're that I'm proud of is the Union Pacific uh, siding that goes along there. We needed that to get Bootsy. That was a $1.2 million project. The concern we had is who's going to pay for it? You know, is that the city's responsibility? So what we were able to do was get a KDOT grant that covered half that cost. And Bootsy did not want um, uh, tax abatements. So what I proposed is, okay, what if we give you tax abatements, but we special assess that cost of that um, that siding to you. And they said, yeah, that's fine. You know, we're going to pay it one way or the other. So that siding ended up costing Bel Air zero. Uh, and then as, as you said, Mayor Integra is probably the, the biggest win that we've had. So, um, uh, our population mayor, as you'd mentioned, it's grown substantially in 2007, we had 1700 customers today. We have 3,800 customers. Um, the budget back in 07, when I got here is 5 million It's 30 million today, um, because of all that growth. This was the mill levy was 23 and we're at 43 now. And again, keep in mind, remember I showed you how we had to raise the mill levy just to cover that, that tax. Look at our assessed valuation because of all the growth. We are 38 million in 07. We're over a hundred million today because of those businesses and things like that. This is the thing that I'm proud of though, not just me, but in 2016, this is land debt. So half of the money that we brought in went out on land debt. So we, we myself and staff had to run this city on half of the mill, half of that 40 mills that we got. So residential growth, uh, when I got here, Central Park was really flailing. Nothing was being developed. Um, Waba had basically blackballed Bel Air because uh, their concern was uh, at that point, uh, Bel Air had had uh, started this subdivision as a developer. And they said, government has no business being a developer. And therefore builders, we don't want you working in Bel Air. They don't, you know, you, it's, it's best done in the private sector. You all are builders, you're developers, that's where it needs to go. So I had to rebuild the relationship with Waba and West Galleon um, to actually get builders to come up here and build. And that was uh, not easy because there was a lot of hard feelings about that. But today, Mayor, you had mentioned it earlier, you know, we've got all these different subdivisions. We still have 800 acres of land that can be platted. So what kind of impact did I have on the community? We celebrated our 40th anniversary back in 2020. Put in this piece of artwork that you, that you see at the roundabout, but people may not know there's a time capsule in there. 
Um, staff put together a, a time capsule in there to be opened at some time, um, but uh, that's in the bottom of that. Uh, I had a council that said we needed to have entry monuments um, to let people know they're in Bel Air. So this was the design that was created. I was able to, we've got seven of them around town. I was able to get five of them donated, paid for by businesses. So Bel Air only paid for two of them. The rest of them were donated. We did the adopt a fire hydrant. We started the Christmas lighting contest, the e-recycling, beautify Bel Air. These are all things that we did. We had booths at the home show, at the chamber, again, trying to spur growth, trying to get uh, people to move to Bel Air Mayor. You said we had parades. We used to have parades here uh, years ago. Uh, then, of course, the Christmas open house. Um, uh, for our 20th anniversary, we even had fireworks that year, which was fun uh, in December. Um, and we, of course, we have Santa. We uh, started the hot dog pool party when we closed the pool, and that's been very successful um, to have the dogs come out and then they shut the pool down. One year had a talent show, 2013, that was at uh, Sunrise, but we had a talent show. Of course, the Spring Festival actually started here at City Hall and then got pretty big and added things to it and then it moved out to um, the rec center. Uh, National Night Out is always big. That started at the fire station and now it's here at City Hall because of uh, the room and such. And then of course the Fall Festival, um, has always been real popular. So I just wanted to say thank you for your support. You all have supported me in the time you've been here. There's been council members that have came before you that supported me. The community has supported me. Um, you know, it's, it's, um, it's, it's kind of unheard of for city managers to be at a place as long as I have. And if it's not because of the support um, that you have that you get to stay and you know I was able to grow with Bel Air and have support and uh, you know it's because of you all as citizens and the citizens at home that that let me stay so I, I thank you for that so my last day is March 29th Ted will be taking over on April 1st and that's all I had Mayor that's my last report thank you We'll we we'll have significant issues on the 30th and 31st of March. <laughs> so thank you very much. We appreciate it. Okay. I didn't expect a report like that, but that's great. Appreciate you doing that. That's a takes a lot of time to put those together. So great. Um, next item is 11 a is a, Walton's Incorporated would like to expand their operations by constructing a new facility within Sunflower Commerce Park. Walton's Incorporated is leading provider of supplies and equipment to commercial and home-based meat processing across North America. They currently employ 60 workers and outgrown their existing 60,000 square foot facility in Wichita. And as part of their expansion, they intend to build a 100,000 square foot facility uh, with an additional 50,000 square foot earmark for future growth. Their uh, Walton's investment in Bel Air stands at $12 million for the construction of this new facility. And uh, this Walton submitted an IRB application with requested property tax abatement and sales tax exemptions. And Walton's and city staff have agreed to recommended abated scale outlined in the IRB policy, which spans over 10 years, gradually reducing the abatement percentage annually. <coughs> Additionally, they have agreed to a 1% origination fee as stipulation by our IRB policy with a request to spread this fee over a five-year period. So a request deemed reasonable by the staff, uh, which has been included in the letter of intent for your consideration. And as part of the IRB process, cost-benefit analysis has been conducted uh, to assess the potential impact of Walton's uh, expansion. The CBA identified a favorable 1.74 cost to benefit ratio in addition to Walton's anticipates hiring 10 new employees within the first five years following the expansion and if you're not aware of it uh, Walton's has sold their facility their current one to Sedgwick County and it will be the new election office but uh, they won't be able to move in until they get this building built over here so that they can uh, have place to move to so 
anyway, so that's uh, that's the issue. And any, any discussion or questions? Uh, I believe Mr. Uh, Henry is here to help answer any questions. I have a question. The f extra 50,000, does that mean they would build onto the building or are they setting aside 50,000 square feet in the building they're building? Sure, I'll let Mr. Walton answer that question. He's here with us tonight. He's been a great uh, partner I, I, I with me. I couldn't figure it out from reading <laughs> the documents. Yeah, the, the extra 50,000 would just be added onto the end of that building to the south. Okay, is, is yeah, that sounds good. For. We're trying to make enough plans for future so we don't get where we are today. Well, hopefully you'll be able to fill it up pretty fast. <laughs> Not so. too fast. He wants to stay there a while. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's the next generation. All right. All right. Great. Good. Good to meet you. I hadn't, I hadn't had Thank a chance you. to meet Thank you. Thank you yet. for considering it, and we appreciate it. The staff's been great to work with, so you're Good. awesome. Good. Mr. Mayor. Ms. Hander. Since, since Mr. Walton's here, could you just briefly tell the residents and us uh, kind of your history and what, what exactly you guys do for okay. those that don't so, know? Uh, history is my dad started the company. I'm second generation. We currently have two of our kids that own half the company. So it's moving towards the third generation. Um, all the time been in this area. Um, and we primarily sell 70% of what we sell goes to commercial meat processors. They're small to mid-sized processors all over the country, not like Excel here or, or Cargill here. Um, so uh, more like a Yoder meat type of places. And uh, so we ship out lots of shipments every day. The other 25, 30% of our business is to what we call home processors. So somebody out goes out and shoots a deer and they want to make jerky and sausage at home. So we sell seasonings, casings, the equipment, everything that has to do with processing uh, meat from all the way to the time it gets out to your plate, basically. And we do have a store. The store, uh, some of you may have been in our store before. Uh, that's only 1% of our sales. So 99% of what we do um, goes out the back door, out and goes out to FedEx or UPS or, yeah. Thanks. Any other questions? I'm glad to answer. Well, that's very interesting. And thank you for doing that review. Any other questions or concerns? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Smith. We're excited to have you here in Bel Air. I think this uh, makes sense to me. It's very consistent with our policy. I'd like to make a motion to approve a letter of intent to issue IRBs and provide other incentives for construction of a warehouse distribution office and retail facility, Walton's 53rd Holdings LLC, and authorize the mayor to sign. Second. A motion by Mr. Smith, a second by Mr. Welch. Any additional questions or discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for a vote. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries five to zero. Item B on the agenda is IRB requires public hearings. So this action sets the public hearing for our first meeting in April uh, related to the Walton's uh, 53rd Holdings issue, IRB. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Uh, Dean. I'll motion to approve a notice of hearing regarding issuance of IRBs and other incentives for construction of a warehouse, distribution office, and retail facility, Walton's 53rd Holding LLC, and authorize the mayor to sign. A second. Motion by Mr. Uh, Dean, a second by Mr. Uh, David. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. That motion carries five to zero. Item C is a contracting agreement of additional work on the uh, city pool. So last fall, the council discussed, discussed options for the city uh, Central Park community pool at the workshop. And after considering options and costs, consensus was to replaster the pool and repair any cracks. So quotes were received and council accepted a quote from Low Bitter Midwest Plastering LLC at a cost of $47,200. Midwest Plastering went to work last week and unfortunately found that the additional the condition was much worse after the plastering was removed. So uh, this will require more time and materials. Midwest Plastering is requesting a change order in the amount of $19,740. And our recreational director, Brian Hayes, is here to explain the issues and answer questions. And why do you have the extra help there today? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Fell off the pool. Did you fall in the pool? <laughs> You're all wondering what I did. I had a little tussle with the soccer goal, and the soccer goal won. So oh, I see. got a long road ahead of me to repair a ruptured Achilles tendon. Oh my! 
So the mayor pretty much uh, went over what happened. They got there last Wednesday, immediately tore into it, and immediately found that this plaster that is there, 80% of it needs to be removed. Uh, they uh, kept working, uh, haven't got to the cracks yet, uh, but that, I expect that will happen yet this week. Uh, but because of, of the warranty that they want to give us, they don't feel comfortable without taking up all the bad plaster before they put the new plaster down. So uh, it's going to, it's taken a lot more labor to do that. And it's going to take a lot more labor and materials to put new plaster down. So basically that's what they told me. And they gave us a change order for that $19,740. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Dean, Brian, I do have a couple questions. So I read through it and I think, I think I understand the issue. Uh, first question is with there being only roughly 20% of plaster service remaining, is there some concern that did they express any concern with leaving that in place and not just redoing it the entire? To. Okay. To. They, they said they want to get to the point where they, there's not a big warranty on this, but they don't want to have to come back. So they, they want to take it as far as they can to feel comfortable with it not failing. And then the second question I had was, was there any alternatives to, to at this point with them having removed probably a majority of that, is there, are there any alternatives to repairing the pool at this moment rather than other than just replastering it? What other option do we have? Well, there's really not at this point. I mean, they didn't present any alternative. Not with this company. That that's what they do. They're a replastering company. Right. That's all I had. Thank you. Any other questions or concerns? Mr. Mayor. Ms. Hamburg. I'm I'm obviously gonna support this since we want to open the pool and half the plaster or more than half the plaster is off. They they indicated that there could be another change order. Did did they indicate how if they think that looks pretty good? Uh we fortunately found something in the bottom of the pool that made my day. Uh, they uncovered the old pool drains, which had been refitted 15 years ago when the new pool drain law came out, when everybody had to change their pool drains. They uncovered some plugs that were hydrostatic valves are supposed to be. We unplugged that and we relieved, relieved the water pressure under that pool. So we have that ability now. Uh, when that pool is empty, uh, the, they they uh, they took that plug out and the water gushed in. I mean, shot in. So that was very good news that when that pool is empty, now we're going to have the ability and they're going to replace those valves. So that made us feel a lot better. That one bad crack that was bad was actually seeping water when that thing was out. Within 30 minutes, it quit after they pulled that valve. So that was a good thing that happened. So they, they took it a little bit farther and investigated and chipped some concrete out and found those those old valves. So that was kind so of So will kind those of nice. remain uncovered then? We're going to fix those so that they will be useful for the future. Cool. And so that's where the additional change order may come, that, that work with that? I, I, I don't think that's going to cost that much. Okay, okay. Yeah, it's already there. Gotcha. It just was covered over. Uh, there are some cracks on the walls. Uh, they're small cracks and they don't seem real concerned about them, but they are going to investigate those a little bit farther. So you've been with the city a long, throughout the entire history of this pool. Do you know why those, those valves ever got covered over? I didn't know that they got covered over. I thought that, <laughs> I, I don't know. I, okay. I thought, I thought they were, I've heard that they were eliminated, uh, by the, a former pool company because of the type of drain that was installed that they couldn't be used anymore, but they're still there and they're still usable. Okay. All right. No, no mean, issues with we, we, we got what we paid for years ago, unfortunately. Yeah. Okay. No reason to, to do, to reconsider that. So just go on and put them back in service and we'll, we'll be in good shape. Yes. Okay. Good. You can only use those valves though when the pool's not being used, right? Excuse me? Uh, the valves you've uncovered to relieve the pressure, you can only do that when the pool's not in use. That's correct. correct. Well, they're, they're, they're one-way valves, so 
that they only work when there's not water in the pool, right. which isn't real often. You know, that's just in the springtime when we're draining it and doing maintenance. And Brian, just to clarify, so other people understand when there's water in it, it's not an issue because it's when, balanced. When that's correct. But when there's not water, there's a pressure wanting to cut water's wanting to come in and it's being forced to not come in. So it's that that is a huge maintenance thing. It is hopefully prevented it. Good stuff. So that's why we for, for years and years <laughs> we didn't drain that pool to clean it. We just put chemicals in it and vacuumed it for three weeks because we didn't want to take the water out of the pool because we were afraid that the pool would float out of the ground. Uh, so we're a little relieved, actually, that that happened. Great. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Smith. I'll make a motion to accept the contracting agreement of additional work change order in the amount of $19,740 from Midwest Plastering LLC for repairs to Central Park Community Pool and authorize the mayor to sign. I'm in the second, and then I have just one quick question. Well, he, Brian can answer from there if, if I don't want to make him come back up. But people ask about the their feet, and this is not going to change the roughness of the pool. Is that right? It should be pretty good. Okay. It'll be better than it was. Okay. It still is what it is. And uh, even you know, all pools are going to have that issue unless there's a lighter pool. And if they and if they're still having issues, they can wear pool shoes or whatever. Okay. And then finally, this isn't going to affect the opening on Memorial Day, right? Okay, thanks. Thank you. Okay, any other questions or concerns? Hearing none, I'll call for a vote. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, aye. same sign. That motion carries five to zero. We'll move on to item E because we moved item D after the executive session. So item E is uh, to supplemental agreement for Garber Construction Services, staking and construction services on 53rd Street. So. Uh, to ensure design accuracy, the city requested our Garver provide a proposal for construction staking services and not to exceed contract. The city will uh, not be billed for services that are not used. The total fee for construction and staking construction support services is $70,100. And the cost of these services will be financed through the general obligation bond for the project. So Ann is here to explain the work and answer questions. I see so the, Mr. Kenley is here too. Is he here to speak about this or something else? No, he's here to speak about this if you okay. have any questions for him. Good. Um, the majority of this contract <clears throat> is for the staking services. And I just want to do everything that I can to make sure that we have a good project that runs smoothly and is done on time within budget. <laughs> so I've learned a lot. <laughs> um, it's all lessons learned. So this is to have Garver, since they designed it, they know where everything goes, come out in the field and stake things out. If they see something that maybe didn't quite get adjusted right on the plans, they can just revise it in the field as they're staking it out. So that's the whole point of this. Um, there is a small fee in there for construction related services. So if something is noticed in the field, if an unanticipated site condition arises, then Garver has the fee to come back out and make whatever fixes necessary, help direct those fixes so we can move on with the project. Um, as everyone knows, Ken is a resident of Bel Air. He has an interest in seeing this project succeed. This just allows him that extra ability to do so. As with all of Garver's construction services, it is a not to exceed fee. It's an hourly not to exceed fee. So anything that is not used will not be charged. I do review invoices as they come in. I have caught several things, not just Garver, but other engineers, um, other contractors. And so I make sure that the fees that we are being charged is legitimate. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Smith. <clears throat> so construction staking, that means there will be like physical stakes placed all along the road, kind of showing where the new road is going to be. That's kind of what you'll see when this is done. Yes, that is correct. A lot of the, specifically the earthwork, a lot of that's done by G I G GPS now, but they do set out um, stakes for checking and just to make sure that things are correct. Mr. David. And so we, we didn't uh, put this in the original contract, the original bid, but you're thinking in the future we probably should? That is correct. Yeah, I'm not sure why we missed it in the original design agreement. It would have, should have been in there, but 
we didn't, so we're getting that fixed to now. I think I have my guesses, but we'll leave it at that. <laughs> Mr. Mayor. Ms. On the um, construction um, support services, so on other projects, the uh, ins inspectors have been kind of the point of contact during a project. Is this because this is more in Garver's wheelhouse that they're better, or have we found on other projects that talking directly to the designer is a better fit? Or No, the, the first point of contact will still be the construction inspection firm, which is Trans Systems. Okay. However, when normally when we do projects like this and we did with the woodlawn project as well there is that construction support services because there's always questions that arise you, you try and anticipate everything you can but there's always something that comes up and so this is that fee to allow them to continue to help us throughout construction so this is i mean a very small piece of the project we don't anticipate a lot occurring Any other questions or concerns? No, I entertain a motion. Mr. Mayor. Mr. David. I make a motion to accept the supplemental agreement with Garver for construction and staking and construction support services for 53rd Street from Oliver to Woodlaw in the amount not to exceed 70,100 and authorize the mayor to sign. I'll second. A motion by Mr. David, a second by Mr. Dean. Any other questions or discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for a vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. That motion carries five to zero. Go on item F. <coughs> this uh, agreement for construction inspections by Trans Systems. So our March 5th meeting, mm -hmm. council approved the proposal from Trans Systems for construction inspection. And that agreement is now on the agenda for consideration. City Attorney Maria Schrock is here to answer any questions. And this is the actual contract. Mr. Mayor, you're correct because at the last meeting there was a threshold between 215,000 and 285,000. We did not have a specific agreement in front of us. That agreement is here. It has been reviewed. Some revisions were made. The total actually comes out to 214,999.78. So it's just the whole, but it does follow along with what the council's desire was, not to exceed 215. So, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Smith, does that mean this is a fixed bid contract? And so if it ends up being more work than they thought, that's on them. We won't expect a change order. Or is this a time and materials contract? What they specifically stated that if there's anything that additional needs to be done beyond what was included, that they would have to come back and that would have to be an additional, I guess you would say a change order, so to speak. But you're correct. It it is not. And if it's if it ends up being less hours than the hours they put in here, will we be billed less? That I would have to defer to city engineer for for conversations. That is correct. This is also an hourly not to exceed contract. Okay. So we will be billed for the services rendered. Yeah, I just have a quick question while you're up here. Uh, Justin, were you, all, were you done? I didn't want to yeah, cut you thank off. You. So one of the questions I followed up with you on was we had the discussion uh, a little bit back and forth at the previous meeting about some potential additional testing that we would need that is not included in trans systems, but is something that we believe is needed. And can you kind of walk us through the purpose of the testing, why we need it, and then what to expect when that comes before us? Sure. So the the additional testing that may or may not be needed is like conformance um when you take a test at school you have the teacher has an answer key by the way they grade the all the test answers so the the geotechnical firm terracon pec gsi would come and take soil samples of the different soil materials run their tests to see at what moisture percentage receives the optimum compaction. So they develop an answer key for that particular soil. Right. I don't believe that's been done yet. We did have pre-designed geotechnical borings work done on 53rd Street. I sent that report to Trans Systems. They're getting with their construction team, reviewing that, seeing if there is any testing, additional testing that is needed, and if so, what it is. The day-to-day -day work of the compaction testing, 
the asphalt testing, the concrete testing, that is all included within Trans System Services. Their on-site field staff are certified to take those tests per KDOT. Right. I just wanted everybody to understand that there's, there, and it's in their quote too, that they excluded the lab testing. So there's additional testing that may be needed to allow them to do their job. Correct. Okay. Just, thank you for the explanation. Yeah, you're welcome. Any additional questions or discussion? If not, I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Mayor. Mr. D Great. Motion Mr. to David. approve the agreement for construction inspection with Trans Systems as presented for 53rd Street reconstruction and authorize the mayor to sign. Second. Motion by Mr. David and second by Ms. Hamburg. Any additional questions or discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for a vote. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. That motion carries five to zero. Move on to item G. So our city attorney, Maria Schrock, came on board about a year ago. And since that time, her workload and city's needs for legal representation have increased. After much discussion and evaluation, the government body determined an increase in pay was needed over to over uh, the added, needed over the added, added time needed for numerous projects. I'm sorry to stumble over those. Anyway, um, so that is included in the packet. And um, any questions or discussion on this issue? If there are none, I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Mayor. Ms. Hamburg. I'm gonna make a motion to approve uh, First Amendment to Employment Agreement of City Attorney and authorize the mayor to sign. I'll second. A motion by Ms. Hamburg, a second by Mr. David. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. The motion carries five to zero. So I'd like to ask for a 30 minute executive session, uh, uh, item A uh, under 12A. Mr. Mayor, I'll make a motion to go into executive session for the sole purpose of discussing the subject of attorney-client consultation regarding contractual obligations pursuant to KSA 75-4319B2 for consultation with an attorney for the public body or agency which would be deemed privileged in the attorney-client relationship, invite the city manager, assistant city manager, city attorney, city engineer, and Neil Ghosh. Meeting will be for a period of 30 minutes and we'll return to chambers at 8.43. I'll second. Motion by Mr. Welch, a second by Mr. Dean. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Executive session for 30 minutes.
Okay, we're going to call me back to order. We held an executive session. No binding action was made, taken. So we'll move to now back to 11, uh, item 11D. And this is, uh, as we consider issues with, um, let me get to my screen. Uh, as we continue to understand issues with Woodlawn, we have engaged PEC to review all the reports, investigate failures, and create a plan for what needs to be done to finish Woodlawn. So PEC has determined additional geotechnical investigation needs to occur related to the water table. And our city engineer, Ann Stevens, is here to explain the work and answer questions. So as the mayor said, um, this is for pre-design information. All of the geotechnical investigations that have been done so far are forensic in nature and their sole purpose was to figure out what happened to the roadway what is causing the failures so this is going to they're going to do some additional different testing on the soils to figure out what sort of stabilization is required moving forward what depth of stabilization is going to be required they're going to determine the appropriate pavement section given the knowledge that we have regarding the water. So that's what this, this, this testing is for. They are intending to put in some monitoring wells to monitor the groundwater. They would like those to be present for two to three rain events. Um, this work will start tomorrow if council approves the quote. Um, and we're, you know, knock on wood, I hope we get a rain event this weekend that starts just after the spring festival. <laughs> <laughs> so that that's kind of where we're going um, the for the public you know they want two to three rain events none of us knows when that's going to happen um, at this point the the boring locations the monitoring wells have been staked out at this point the monitoring wells will not impact traffic there will be some traffic impacts as PEC is doing the drilling particularly south of the track will have flaggers in place to direct traffic around the drill rigs. But at this point, the intent is to not impact traffic. All right, any questions or concerns? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Mayor, I'll make a motion to approve the quote from PEC in the amount of 19,000 for additional geotechnical investigation and monitoring wells for the Woodlawn Project and authorize the mayor to sign all related documents. I'll second. Motion by Mr. Welch, second by Mr. Dean. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Same side. That motion carries five to zero. Move on to uh, item 12B. And I think the city attorney handed out a, uh, a new draft of the motion to be stated. So we'll entertain a motion. I think we need uh, 15 minutes for this. Executive session B. <clears throat> Mr. Mayor. Mr. Smith. I'll make a motion to recess into executive session to discuss contractual obligations pursuant to KSA 754319B2 for consultation with an attorney for the public body or agency, which would be deemed privileged in the attorney client relationship. The executive session will include the city manager, assistant to the city manager, and attorneys for the city. The executive session will be for a period of 15 minutes, and the open meeting will resume in city council chambers at 9.03 p.m. Second. Motion by Mr. Smith, a second by Mr. Welch. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. We're in executive session for 15 minutes.
Okay, we held an executive session. No binding action was taken. I'll call the meeting back to order. And we're ready to move on to item 13, future issues. So any items, additional items we need to discuss for future issues to mention? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Dean. I was actually informed and reminded by Ann that there is cookies and punch afterwards if we wanted to stay for a few minutes to celebrate Ty. So forget that's a that. very oh. immediate future item. Yeah, well, so. we've kind of... Get the punch, Ty. We were supposed to do that earlier, and I, it went past my, over my mind. I didn't even think of that. Okay, yes. Thank you for reminding us. Sorry that we didn't do it earlier. All right. Um, anything else? Is there a motion to adjourn? I move to adjourn. Second. A motion by Mr. Smith, a second by Mr. Welch. All in favor say aye. Aye. Both same sign. We are adjourned. See everybody in two weeks, huh?